My name is Dr. Jude Anawaha. Today, I'll be talking about self-empowerment in the management of diabetes. This is the fourth scientific presentation of Obodoku Union North America Life Care Team. Owner Life Care Team is the health subcommittee of Obodoku Union of North America. For patients, I would just say there are generally three types of diabetes you want to be worried about. The first one, you need insulin. The second, you might be producing insulin, but your body is not using it well. And the third group, generally other things are causing that. But whichever way you're talking about, the end result is that there's a buildup of glucose in the bloodstream, which makes the bloodstream concentrated. Drawing water from tissues around, making you urinate frequently, and drink a lot of water. Because the glucose is in the bloodstream, not inside the cells, where metabolism occurs. The patient is starving in the midst of plenty and could even eat more and further raise the blood glucose. And through all these changes in blood concentration and the acid base balance, you could have collapse, coma, and damage to body organs. Again, most patients who are diabetic know that they've got to use insulin or the good old tablets or some of these newer designer injections or some of these newer enzyme inhibitor tablets, but they often forget that they've got to balance the energy intake and the energy output. And sometimes all you've got to do is to stop some offending medications like mental health medications. Let me say it clearly. It doesn't matter whether you need insulin or not. You've got to change your lifestyle if you want to have good control of your blood glucose. Again, you've got to change your lifestyle essentially how you eat how you move around and what you eat if you want to have good control of your blood glucose that is how you can hit the target of your a1c being less than 6.5 if you're younger a little bit higher if the person is older and especially if the person has had some complications already and the aim is to avoid complications because um, these complications when they arise they have very serious consequences in the patient's well-being and longevity fortunately if the glucose is well controlled you can either delay or avoid these problems that arise from damage to the arteries. What is the patient's role to prevent diabetes complications through enhanced blood glucose control? All you've got to do is to eat three times a day and exercise at least three to seven days a week, use your medicines as directed buy a glucometer, keep your clinic and lab appointments, and wear some soft cover shoes to protect your feet. These six steps are the patient's personal responsibility. Again, these six steps are the patient's personal responsibility. The saying is that God helps those who help themselves. And I'm telling you today, Diabetes is better controlled in those who have themselves. 
What did I say? Diabetes is better controlled in those who are not lazy and help themselves. So it is important for anybody who is diabetic to move around and control what it is because you're dealing with a very, very dangerous illness. And all that I'm trying to tell you today is to reduce the food portions, don't skip your meals, do your exercise, buy glucometer, use your medicines, keep your clinic appointments and wear some soft cover shoes. Because the risk of fine medications can take you if you have diabetes. You gotta move around, you gotta control what goes into the body. Lifestyle modification, because it involves talking about activity, exercise, body, image, can be a sensitive topic. Not to mention that it doesn't help pharmacists sell medications. But I'm here to tell you once again that it doesn't matter how much medications you take. Proper eating and regular exercise, both of them are essential and integral to good control of diabetes. So, if you skip meals, the risk of having low sugars, which can kill, arise. And by the way, you gotta know the size of low sugar, agitation, confusion, fogginess, forgetfulness, sweating, shivering, headache, passing out, convulsions. So, you've got to carry some rescue snacks or candy. We prefer the rescue snacks instead of candy. But candy is better than nothing. So that when you have any of these symptoms or signs, you want to pop the snack or candy. And you want to eat, just eat enough to be pleasantly full because any excess glucose in your body is dangerous. Whether it is in the bloodstream or you're hiding it from the bloodstream into the cells, it is still dangerous because the excess energy that goes into the cell, which the cell does not need for its respiratory and metabolic functions, will again be stored into other forms of energy, like fat, that predisposes the patient to damages to the blood cells, right to the arteries that cause the complications of diabetes. The Center for Disease and Control recommends for diabetics to exercise 25 to 30 minutes at least three times a week. If you are younger, about one hour daily will be good. This is going to make your medications work better and reduce the need for higher doses of medications. All you've got to do is to swim, walk uphill, push-ups, squats, weightlifting, yoga, tai chi. As you can see, you don't have to be a member of a gym. Let me repeat that. You don't have to be a member of a gym. None of these exercises cost you money. Maybe a swimming pool. But you don't have to swim. There are so many other beautiful things you could do that don't require you going to register in a gym. If you are in a good hook, you can go to Russia River. If it is still there. Anyway, and again, exercise is going to improve your appearance and your self-confidence. And even when you use your medications as recommended, you still have to exercise and eat right. Because that is when you're going to have optimum utility of your medications. 
I see a lot of people who are not exercising and they are taking a particular dose of medication for diabetes. And for some reason, they go for some community event and they have to be on their feet, walking, squatting, lifting, and in about 30 minutes, they are sweating. The reason is because the muscles have exercised and burnt out some more energy. And then when you now combine it with the medicines floating around in your body, that is likely going to push your glucose low and give you sugar lows. But if these patients have had basic basal exercise routine and predictable energy intake, if they understood that and practiced that, this kind of fluctuations and unforeseen situations will be far between. And it will help you to reduce the fear of the disease if you don't experience unusual things like sugar levels. And of course, that will give you confidence that you're going to see your children or your children. Buy a glucometer and use it. Don't tuck it away on the, your pillow or on inside a cupboard next to your bed. And use it to monitor your glucose in addition to your diet and exercise. Self-monitoring of glucose is important especially for all diabetics. And this glucometer is very important for the type 2 diabetes because you can use your morning glucose to determine the effect of the food you ate yesterday on your blood glucose. And that's how you begin to adjust the quantity and type of food you eat. We call that glycemic index. Again, I recommend doing your blood glucose if you are type 2 about 7 8 in the morning before you eat. And when you do that, think back and say, oh, what food did I eat last night? And then you compare, you, you remember that food and match it with your blood glucose. If the food you ate, this morning your blood glucose was good, then you know it's a good food. If the food you ate last night and this morning your blood glucose is high, you know it's got high glycemic index. You've got to cut the quantity. Or avoid it if you want. But we never recommend avoiding any food. Or we say, cut down your food portion. Do your labs so you can know your numbers when you go to see a doctor. When you go to see a doctor, ask for hepatitis and pneumonia vaccine if you haven't gotten it and your yearly flu vaccines. Know your numbers. Blood pressure, weight, A1C, glucose, collateral, kidney test. That's what you've got to know to empower you to know that you're doing the right thing and that your treatment is working fine. And when you get your A1C, plot it into this formula on the, that I gave you here to determine your average blood glucose in the last three months. And you want it to be around uh, 5.7 equivalent to 117. And make sure your provider checks your skin for sensation. Wear your cover shoes. Report any wound that don't heal in the usual time known to you. When you participate in these activities, you will feel good and you would not feel like you are suffering from a sickness running away from you. You will be in control. It is not enough for you to just go see a doctor and go home and rest and take medicines. You've got to do these six things so that there will be few surprises in the journey of living with diabetes. Let me mention that if you are overweight, you add a lot of weight, usually for younger persons before diabetes comes in, you've got to lose a lot of weight to your ideal weight before the good luck of glucose of diabetes disappearing. Again, thank you very much and take good care of yourself.